Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to do a product test with some gouache paints. I've been sent this wonderful set of gouache by Hemi, which is a brand that I've used before, but I've never used their gouache paints. So I am going to have a go for the first time as it's similar to watercolor, but ever so slightly different. It's more opaque. You have a whole different approach with the way you use light and dark. So why don't you watch along whilst I figure it out? So here's the box, 24 colors. Let's open it up and have a look. So the first thing I get is a palette, nice amount of space as well as some mixing wells, which is really nice. And then here are the jelly cups, which sound delicious, but um, we shouldn't eat them. So we've got gouache in all separate pots of color. Now, as I said, I am a complete first timer with gouache, but I did have a little bit of a look at some fellow watercolor artists and what their take on this was, because I thought that would be the most interesting angle. And um, my fellow watercolor tutor and friend, Emma Lefebvre, um, also looked at this set. And um, I'll say I was really interested to see what she came up with. And there were a few very interesting points she made. First one being, the best way to get these paints out and open them up. Turn the box over and there you go. So what I'm gonna do, open them all up, put them back in the tub and then we're gonna do some color swatches. Well, here are my paints all back in their little spaces. I've, I've uh, laid them out how I want and that's one of the nice things about this set is you can arrange your colours exactly how you want. It was a bit of a messy business uh, taking the lids off but not too bad and one of the real plus points about having them laid out like this as opposed to tubes because you can buy them in tubes just like you would watercolours is you can use the lid to seal it tight which means the preservation of the paints is a lot longer, which means you can use them for a lot longer, they don't dry out, because when you are using gouache, one of the things that I have discovered is you kind of want to use up all the paint you have out. Say if you had it out in a separate little palette, you want to use all that up. Whereas with watercolor, of course, all you do is add a little bit of water to your dried out paints and it reactivates and is fantastic, good as new. It's not quite the same with gouache. So therefore that lid is fab. Now I will say, uh, and I'll probably keep repeating this throughout, I have never used this paint before. I'm a complete beginner and I don't know a huge amount about it, but I thought that was the best way to approach it for the rest of you who are completely new to it. I'm not even sure if my pronunciation is 100% correct, but there you go. That's the beauty of trying new things, isn't it? And not being scared to maybe make mistakes or get things wrong. It's all how we discover and create. So Hemi have also sent me some lovely brushes. These are rounded points, so these are familiar to me. Synthetic bristles, really, really nice brushes. Um, I noticed on the back of the packet said that these were good for acrylics and oils as well as gouache, so they're fantastically diverse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little swatch chart. Um, now what I've done here is uh, firstly, I've drawn a grid of pencil lines which matches my set of paints, the 24 colors, but I've also put in a Sharpie uh, black line across each grid square because when I paint over that, I can instantly see how opaque the gouache is because I have learned that some colors are naturally more opaque than others, which is a very similar concept to some watercolors. Now we want to add a little bit of water to get some of these paints activated. So I'm going to use my palette, which came with, with the set. So I'm gonna get myself set up and then we can have a little chat as we go. So I think I will use the size 10. Um, now these brushes are brand new, so they're very crispy bristles. I just need to soften that up, get it nicely watered and I'm going to begin, well I'll begin down here. Now the names of the colors are listed and they are listed in English on the back of the set, which is brilliant. So you can see here, uh, I've got a wet brush, so there's a little bit of water added, but not a huge amount. And it's got a creamy consistency, I think is the best way of putting it. It's a bit like having a, a pot of yogurt. <laughs> or creme fraiche here. 
and that looks really nice to me. So I am going to now paint in a swatch and you can see that that has a really nice coverage on it. I'm going to clean my brush off and it clouds up the water quickly and I can also see, I don't know if you can see on camera there, that it's definitely taking a bit of time to clean that brush off so it clings to the bristles even longer than with watercolour so you'll definitely want to have a bit of kitchen roll to one side. So I'm going to fill up this swatch chart and then we can have a look and see at which of the paints are the most opaque. Swatch is all done. Um, we can see here that it's not just a case of the darker colours being the more opaque. We've got some examples of some really lovely uh, opaqueness going on even in the lighter tones. Um, but you can see that there is a range even within one brand of colours. So I'm going to have a go at painting a flower because that's what I'm interested to see how it works. And what I'm really excited about and the thing that I've always felt with watercolour I can't do is I'm going to paint a background first and then I'm going to paint a flower on top of it. Now the other thing is included in the set you do get a, a small pack of brushes, you get a pointed round size 4 and you also get two, uh, two sort of broader ones, a flat one and a slightly sort of softer edge. So I'm going to use the ones that the set gave me. The other thing is, is the, the names of the colours are listed on the back of the pack so you can always write in those colours for your swatches as well. So one more thing to think about is what kind of paper do we use for gouache? Well, I feel because it is a kind of pigment that is less reliant on lots of water, um, you'll find more often that you might be using quite a dry brush. So you want a piece of paper that has as little kind of friction against the paint as possible. So from a watercolorist's point of view of what I've got in stock, I'm going to use a hot pressed paper which is the smoother type of watercolour paper and that's what I painted on here and that's what I'm going to paint on for my flower painting. I'm ready to go for my actual piece. So I did hold on to this larger brush that I was also sent by Hemi because it just seems like it's going to be much easier to apply a big large background of colour. So you might want to consider getting yourself a larger brush size um, if you do want to paint nice big amounts of colour. Um, now I've found uh, so far in the filming of this video um, it's uh, quite exhausting uh, all the there's quite a lot of tidying up and cleaning up each time and I think that's just because I'm so used to watercolour being so easy to wipe up and clean up and use and the paint is not that thick so um, all of this is very much coming from the point of view of somebody who is used to watercolour whereas you might be new to both and your experience of gouache therefore might just be completely joyful whereas mine is is definitely trying to unlearn certain things um, and the other thing I will say is this is very much a product review and not a tutorial because there are some absolutely brilliant gouache teachers on YouTube and in the world and I'd highly recommend you go and have a look at them. I've linked a few below in the episode notes um, who I thought were really fantastic so you can start your gouache journey. Alongside your watercolour journey I might add, you know, we've still, we've still got some cool stuff in the watercolour camp. Um, anyway, so the, one of the things I've learnt um, before you know, doing my research, before doing this video, is that if you're going to paint a large background of colour, you want to have your paint, although quite strong and opaque, you want to have it a slightly diluted level. If you put paint directly from there to there with no addition of any water, you'd get such a thick coating that when you painted anything on top in a new layer, um, that paint underneath would be activated by the sort of action of the brush stroke on top of it and would sort of blend off and affect the colours on top of your page. So that's something to note. So I'm going to paint a big section of yellow, whoops, on my hot press paper and the hot press paper is working an absolute treat for this, it's smoothly gliding across and just working really beautifully and it's allowing me to do um, 
sort of minimal brush strokes. I'm not having to go back over things too much um, because I want the colour to stay vibrant and not too impeded by tons of brush strokes. So that's another reason why getting a larger brush as part of your painting set is a really good idea. And I am going to paint a foxglove on top of this. And I've, I've got one from the garden because whilst we film, this is foxglove season in the UK. And they're quite delicate pale flowers, so I thought it would be a really good test against this bright background. Okay, I'll just even that up a little bit. So I quite like the fact that it's a little bit dilute. We can see a few bits of texture. Let me just get my foxglove. So here we are. It's purple uh, and pale and delicate and I think will be quite a fun thing to paint over the top of this yellow. So we just need to let this dry 100% and I will of course um, report back to how long that took and then we can get painting. I'm really excited. Right, my yellow paint has dried. Interestingly, there was even a few, even though I tried to be quite um, dilute, there are a few little seams of, of even thicker color that took even longer to dry, but I'd say that was all touch dry within 10 minutes. Um, and I've got my fox glove here, so lovely purple colours, and let's let's have a go. So I've got to try and think. As a watercolourist, I would normally start lightest colours first, then build up the colour to be sort of a stronger and darker shades as I go. But with gouache, I think I want to sort of start on a like a mid-level colour and then I've got room to go darker but I've also got room to go lighter with my opaque colours. So this is what I'm thinking but I've also got to remember to make sure I've got enough paint to paint a nice sort of thick line. Um, so in the, the set I was given a size 4 brush, round, uh, pointed round, so let's have a go. I am so nervous, gosh. It's, um, I don't know why I'm nervous, because this is a product review, not a tutorial. Okay, so there is my, there's my foxglove stem. And the cool thing is, is in one fell swoop, I've got a nice stem and I, I yeah, the colour's really nice. I'm already feeling like this brush is a bit big and I want a smaller one. So I'm going to, for the sake of painting a nice picture, get in one of the brushes that they sent me in addition, which is a size, well actually this is a size 4 and that's a size 4. Hmm, interesting. Maybe this is from a smaller range because I also got sent some additional packs of brushes. So I've got this one here. as well as these ones that came with the set. So I'm going to start placing in the little sort of unformed buds at the top. And you still get to do the lovely sort of using the brush, the thin and thick doing all that kind of thing. So I guess I'm just going to keep going with this, this level of colour, and then we can start adding in our, the start of our foxgloves. But it's making me think actually what I should probably do. Clean that off. There's the other thing I think is interesting when you've got white bristled brushes that the colour does stain the bristles quite a bit. You sort of go, is it really clean? Is it really clean? So just keep on blotting it out on your kitchen roll and you will soon see. Yes, it is. Right, so I'm going to mix now a little bit of the yellow in with my white and a little bit of the green as well just to get a really nice pale colour for the 
flowers at the top. Wow, that's pretty cool. It's just such an alien concept to me to paint lighter colours onto dark backgrounds. And so I can do a few sort of bits of layering up on top whilst it's still wet, but I can also wait until it's dried. So let's paint another of these bells in. And this time I'm gonna add some more of the purple. So I'm gonna do a larger one further down. Clean that brush off. So yeah, it's just a little bit more labour intensive than watercolour because the paint just clings to the brush just a little bit more. So a bit of water. And I'm going to use this, yeah, a little bit sort of dilute. And then get a slightly stronger amount. So I guess now the test is, if I was using watercolour I would sort of just use water to blend, but of course I'm pushing the colour a bit more, I'm not, it's not blending quite so much, but it is doing quite a nice job. Okay, well I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to tell you my findings as I go. Well, after feeling extremely confused and um, feeling like it was completely uh, against my instincts, I'm starting to get the hang of adding and layering up colour um, in the palette, creating my colours in the palette, rather than relying on a blend happening on the page, which is very much my style of watercolour. So, to be able to create yeah, the, the different colours down here in the palette means you, you need to be a little bit more organised, which um, so this is quite telling about me as a painter. I am not the most organised. Um, so this is a really interesting exercise and actually I'm really enjoying it now. I was a bit unsure at first. Understatement, I was massively unsure. <laughs> at first and I was, I was sort of going oh my brush is too big is it what's the problem but actually as soon as I just understood that the, the process is it's almost sort of the opposite order of things to watercolour then I was like okay I, uh, I accept that so now I'm going to place on the sepals I mean yeah you could say I am used to painting with slightly smaller brushes so this is also just allowing that slightly sort of more stylized approach to painting but that's absolutely fine and I've always wanted to sort of go down that route. So isn't it funny when you just sort of stick your head above the parapet and try something new, it can work out okay. I mean, we're not out of the woods yet, but I am enjoying this. And so I can do things like this and uh, it not be too much of a big deal. Whereas in watercolour, there'd be an awful lot of thinking about where on earth the brushes are going to position the next stroke to make sure they don't sort of all get muddied up and messed up. So the next thing I want to have a look at is getting a bit more darkness in. I've got this shadow mix of blue and brown, um, just like I would in watercolour, but I'm going to bring it up here and come up with a darker green shadow. I've got Prussian blue, so one of the blues 
is Prussian blue is labelled that on the kit so that's really helpful and I believe that other one is burnt sienna so I'm pretty pleased with that so I'm just using the palette to sort of twizzle the bristles yeah I think the only challenge is sort of trying to get a really nice fine point as soon as you sort of relax into it which is what I tell all my students with watercolour is you start to get nice bits of detail and fine points and then I think the big challenge is I've created really dark um, undersides of those foxglove bells but inside a foxglove you get these lovely spots but you also get a sort of white um, background and then the spot on top so get some more white out of the palette if I just grab one of these flowers so we can see what I'm talking about see there so I mean I've gone really dark on the inside of my uh, fox gloves already so this will be quite stylized but that's quite fun isn't it that works just have to be careful if the paint is still really wet not to disturb it too much There is a great vibrance to painting in gouache, which I massively appreciate. Which, I mean, watercolour is vibrant too, but it's just not quite as punchy. So I, I feel like this is something I will play around with in future. Uh, watercolour still is my first love and truly has my heart but gouache has definitely excited me I always knew I wanted to try it um, but it just yeah it's just that case of finding the time isn't it okay so I'm going to mix in a bit of darkness into my purple and then I'm going to add just Oh no, the white's still a bit wet. Okay, we're going to let this dry a little bit more and then come back in for last bits of detail. So another little wait to make sure that was all dry. And now I'm going to add my little purple dots whilst I give you my little sum up of how I found painting not only gouache but painting with these paints in particular. So first off it was extremely counterintuitive painting in uh, the order of which you paint gouache with the, the layers not needing to be the lightest one first. Um, so as a watercolour artist it is quite strange at first but I quite quickly began to enjoy myself very much because the effects you get are just so vibrant and things just pop off the page and it's so fun to be able to paint a background and paint things over the top that are still quite light and bright. Um, the quality of these paints I think is great. I haven't struggled to get sort of vibrant colours. I think they mixed really nicely there um, and I love how the actual box itself has that 
so uh, it has the lid that closes and goes sort of seals airtight so it means the paints will be preserved for longer. Um, I think for the brushes that you get with the 24 set um, you could probably, there we go, these ones, you could probably do with having one larger and one smaller just so you can get some more detail because I'm a real sort of, I love working with a small brush and so I struggled to get the real finesse I wanted even with one extra small brush that I had. However, I've had a great time and I know that set of paints is gonna last me a really long time. So I can dip in and try these out and hopefully improve. Um, but yeah, I think it's absolutely great fun uh, to have a go. As I said, I've listed the link for the set below as well as some really fantastic gouache painters on YouTube who I think are fab. So I really hope you've enjoyed this one and I've had a lot of fun too. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that product review. So Hemi sent these to me to give them a go. And if you want to give them a go, then you can buy your own set by using the link in the episode notes below. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support that enables me to keep creating videos that you can enjoy. And if you enjoyed this one, then hit the like button below and comment to let me know if you're a big fan of gouache paints or if you're interested in trying them. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.